what to expect to, for a marriage. Uh, this is the MGTOW version. I've got to say, I've got to do these in separate ways because because uh, obviously I am married. But I've also been in relationships in the UK before I got married to my wife from the Philippines. Um, I found personally that a lot of the relationship is one-sided financially. And then you can find that you have to be a lot more giving than taking. Uh, for example, the way a house gets furnished, you're often giving things up for peace and quiet. You know, for example, somebody may actually say to you, you know, what, what, what color room should we have? And it doesn't matter what color you, you decide, because she'd already decided two days earlier, but she just wants your opinion, so she's going to change it to whatever she wanted in the first place. Um, that sort of thing is normal. And you often find that you can end up losing a lot of your friends while spending more time with her friends. That's quite normal. Um, you can find that, depending on your relationship setup, you may end up picking up a lot more bills than are yours. You know, this is the joke on the 50-50. I find that it's very rare that you get 50-50 in a relationship. You normally find somebody is picking up more than the other and it's generally the guy. Um, so for example, you may end up with 85% of the bills. I mean, I remember an example of this is a car. Because my ex used to say, well, you drive the car. I drive you to work in the car. Um, I pay the fuel, the tax, the insurance, the MOT, the servicing, and yet you're getting free ride, you don't even cover the fuel to even go to and from work, but hey, it must be my car, and then obviously paying the rent and whatever. Um, that's the sort of thing that you're sort of pushed into over time, and it's just not worth the hassle. I'll be honest with you guys, it's not worth the hassle, because once people are into this comfort zone of this is, this is how it suits me, which is where it often leads, where a lot of women will do stuff to suit themselves and you just, guys generally are too laid back and will let people take, take, take. This is why the UK thing where the guy goes and sits in the shed is a bit of a joke, but it's reality for a lot of guys because that's their space. They'll go, oh, I've got to go and fix the lawnmower and go and sit down there with a shot of uh, scotch and listen to the radio to get away from the wife that's taking control of the house. Now, there is other extremes to this, and I'm gonna bring some up, and I'm not gonna mention some names. This is a, somebody I know. His wife is from the Horsey Horsey set, and she spent 30,000 pounds on a, a horse. He doesn't actually have his own income. He, well, sorry. When I say he doesn't have his own income, I don't mean from earning sense. He earns quite well. Because um, he works full time uh, for for a company. At the same time, he actually has stuff he does in his own workshop in the evenings as well. Because they have quite a large house. Because obviously they've got horses. But he stopped smoking, and his wife cuts his allowance down. His allowance. This is the guy that pays all the bills. Because she screws around on the horses, and I assume she does more than just the horses. Um, but the point is, he's not even allowed up to the parents' house on the Sunday for Sunday dinner. He's, he's below their standard that they accept for their vulgar daughter. Um, at the same time, he's also got a daughter that is very similar to the mother. Mother. Now, I'm not being funny. My personal view on that, I wouldn't be doing it. And he's not the only guy that I know that do these stupid things where they just keep giving and giving and giving. And her, with her, she was a vulgar woman to begin with. I don't know what the attraction was because there's definitely nothing sexual about her and there's definitely nothing beautiful about her. She looks very similar to the horses she's riding. Um, but at the same time, he is very limited on his finances, yet the guy was previously a millionaire. He lost, he lost a lot of money during the, uh, what is it? the mad cow's disease. It affected his business because he worked with a lot of farms and things. Um, but the point being is he's, he built up another business from scratch and everything else. He's been self-supporting and everything else. His wife just rides around horses. Now, that's not an extreme for me. I know plenty of people that have got similar scenarios with different things. And ultimately, why do guys give so much? Why? Um, unless there's something that, that is a decision-making process. I can understand that, but a lot of this stuff 
just creeps in. You know, the 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 wife's car, the, well, wife's car breaks down because we're talking about marriage. So you say, I'll borrow my car, I'll, I'll borrow one from work or whatever, or I'll deal with yours because I'll fix it, you know, over the next couple of days, come at home anyway, working or whatever. And then suddenly you're driving around in the clapped out car while she's whizzing around in yours. Why did we do it? And the reason I'm bringing this up is you can analyze your own relationships and there's two ways to, to deal with this. The first is either you recognize it and realize you're unhappy and maybe the relationship's not for you anymore. Well, so it's three ways. Second one is you recognize you're unhappy or are happy, but you're not willing to change anything because you're in a rut and you choose to do that. Or the third one is just call it a day. Um, my personal view is you just need to analyze this stuff yourself. It's a, it's a personal decision. But I do think too many guys just sit on the fence. You know, they'll go to the pub on the way home for a pint, a sneaky pint on the way home before they go home. Um, now, doing that tells you there's a problem with the relationship in the first place because your first port of call is not home, it's to go to the pub to get away from home before you end up there. Um, so I do think it's important to recognize if there is problems, maybe you should do something about it. But also, you do not need to get married if you're thinking about going down this route because I think if you're living together, cohabiting, you've got that advantage where you can walk out at some point or you can have the three day three day stopover and things like that and try to stay more independent which i think going back years i would have, i should have done that myself i'd have been much much happier and i'd have had a lot more money by now that's for sure um but it all becomes part of the learning process which is why i push these MGTOW things out alongside everything else because if you knew what you knew if, if you knew what I knew now, then, or when, if you're younger now, um, you could have avoided a lot of the stuff that I went through over the years. And ultimately, that's the point. Thanks for watching.